everyone, my name is Dana, and I want to do a little bit self-introduction. This is me on the cover of a school brochure. I got my bachelor's degree in international business and master's degree in business analytics at Temple University, which is located in Philadelphia, United States. The summer of 2016, I studied abroad at Tokyo, and I also had an internship at Petrokucha. I was sitting with Mark uh, between Mark and Astrid in this photo. So when Mark reached out to me and said it would be fun to hear more about a Petrokucha staff's experience to be stuck in Wuhan, I decided to share this story. I was born and raised in Wuhan. When I was 19, I left Wuhan and went to U.S. for higher education. Seven years later, in the beginning of this year, I decided to come back to China for more opportunities. Dramatically, three days after I arrived in Wuhan, the city was locked down due to the coronavirus outbreak. There are rumors that the outbreak is because people in Wuhan eat bats. No, we don't eat bats. That is never a trend in Wuhan. The most popular food in Wuhan is hot dry noodles, which is made with sesame paste. By the way, the actress for the new Mulan movie is from Wuhan. The quarantine order was very unexpectedly, and there was no end date, so we didn't know how long it would continue. The first day, airports, train station, all the channels leave and enter in Wuhan was cut off. Then, a few days later, personal vehicles were prohibited too. Next, we were not even allowed to leave the apartment building. As you can see in a photo, there were fences everywhere on streets. The quarantine orders were getting stricter and stricter. We didn't know what would be the next step, so we were confused and anxious. In order to keep residents indoor, our community uh, took orders for groceries and delivered orders to our door. Every day, the organizer would post a list of items in the residents group chat and the residents would reply with the number of each item they need. Luckily, my family and I didn't get infected. For people who are not sick, how to stay healthy, both physically and mentally, when living indoor for such a long time became the question. I got a trampoline and that's one of my best decisions. Highly recommend to everyone. My mom practiced many skills that she didn't have time or chances to use. Other than inventing new recipes, she also made pickles. Since most shops were closed and we couldn't leave the building unless it's emergency, she also became my dad's personal hairdresser. Health QR code system was invented during this time. If you reported being housed continuously and your location has no new patients for a few days, you will get a green code. People can check the number of COVID-19 cases in China on their cell phones. And close to the end of quarantine, even though all public transportations were still down, people are allowed to go out if you wear a face mask, has a normal body temperature, and has a green health code. There are securities to scan our health code in all public facilities. So finally, we were able to go out and life is getting back to normal step by step while anti-epidemic measures are still on. Restaurants are for takeout only, but at least people can go out and enjoy more of life now. I was living abroad for seven years and I missed a lot of family time. Being an international student in US means that I couldn't spend Chinese New Year with my family because it's always school time. This quarantine gave me an opportunity to reconnect with my parents. When I saw so many people lost their loved ones in this global challenge, I feel really thankful that I still have the chance to see my parents and to be with them. The pandemic and the quarantine forced us to slow down and reflect a lot of things in our life. Wuhan was locked down for 76 days. Surprisingly, life was pretty in order here. There was not much chaos of fighting over supplies. Nobody ever thought a big city with 11 million population can complete such a task. Wuhan showed the world that uh, uh, in fact way to uh, control epidemic and pandemic. 
there are a few things I have learned during this uh, special experience. First, we are really living in a global village. In the old days, if an epidemic happened in one area, it wouldn't be spread out too far. However, in the modern days, before people even realized there's an epidemic, there would be hundreds, even thousands of people already left there by airplane and spread the virus to other countries in just a few days. When we face pandemic, environment problems, and more issues, every country have to join hands. That is not an ocean. That is the only way. The second thing I've learned is every ordinary day it's a good day that we should cherish. People tend to ignore things that we always have. We only realize how precious they are when they were taken away from us. I'm sure that many people already miss the days that they can just leave the house and go to work. One question I hope my audience can think for a little bit is, when you are away from the social interactions and take off labels, do you still like who you truly are? Isolated time is a good time to have some self-reflections. Okay, thanks for listening today. Welcome to connect with me via LinkedIn or email. I'd like to answer any questions or start some new dis discussions. Hope this difficult time will pass soon and please take care. I hope you all are healthy and inspired today. Good luck.